Hey everybody out there, Chris and Mike here and welcome back to another indie comic book review. This is for the books that were released the first week of August, August 6, 2014. We got a little bit of physical, we got a couple of physical books, little amount this week, and we have several digital books, two guilty pleasures, and the rest are all uh, digital books. So let's start with yeah. the physical. So I'm on my book. From Vertigo Comics. <laughs> Hinterkind issue number 10. I've had it. Done? I'm, I am done, done with this. This comic book, it just... Like, let me explain how the book is. First of all, the artwork... Uh, well, it is kind of bloody, but I'll show you all. Basically, it's Prosper and John who uh, are trying to get rid of these uh, military people who are vampires. And all that other stuff. Vampires always kills the comic. Well, it's not that part. I'll get into why. So, um, and they take uh, in the ogres because they're known to be uh, not so good people. So John and uh, Prosper, they try to escape. And here's some artwork. And John gets captured by them while Prosper goes away. So then we get into, like, uh... This other stuff where um, uh, this guy's actually uh, questioning uh, this person who, uh, you know, did all that. Of uh, the assassins who tried to kill the queen and everything else. And uh, it leads into him killing the guy we questioned. And then it goes into a supper time thing where there is a huge, long dialogue about... You know about all of uh, what's going on, the secret of Sojin. It was boring, the whole thing. And then it wound up where the daughter actually kills the queen. The queen is now the new one. I did this. Done. No. It. This book. I was looking. I'm like, what the hell was I reading? The book stinks. It, it doesn't show Dr. Monday or whatever right. that guy name is. I'm done. It's a guy is over. I love how when I drop a book, it takes me one minute to explain why. It took you four minutes to explain why you're dropping the book. You're welcome. Get into it. Invincible 113 was spectacular. Polar opposite of your book. Loved it this week. Back to Mark and Eve. Well, not, not Mark and Eve at the beginning. In the beginning, it's all about um, saving... Um, the name of the character. I forgot her name. Shoot, it left me. Uh, but it goes back to Mark and Eve. Then Mark's baby is born. He has a little girl. And you see that they're kind of that, you know, him and Eve finally get like that moment together where things have calmed down and everything looked like at the beginning when Mark first came back that it was over. Eve wants the baby and she wants Mark out of their lives. And now she kind of said, I'm not mad at you for leaving or being gone so long. I'm mad at you because you did it on a maybe this would be a threat and not this is a threat. When it is a threat, you kind of don't or something somewhere along those lines. And then she kind of grabs him and says, come, come here to give him a hug. And he kind of like jumps. So he, get, he got startled. And then he actually, um, oh, well, maybe they mentioned the name here. No, that doesn't. Okay. So the woman that actually was, that did have her way with Mark uh, shows up and you get to see his hand shaking. You got his fist shaking. It looks like he wants a pounder, obviously. Uh, honestly. And then Machine Man shows up in front of the base and all of the people, including Mark's dad, surround him. And he's like, look, I know you guys are on Earth. I know you guys couldn't care less what I'm, you know, about what's going on on Earth. And he's doing like a million different things at the same time. He's like, but I'm here to make you an offer. Um, join, um, join me, and you can have the entire world to repopulate, and we'll stay out of your way. Goes back to Mark and Eve again, where Eve is telling him he has to go out and he has to do, you know. He needs to do what he has to do. 
and that's that. That's where it's left off. So will the uh, Voltramites take the offer, or will Mark and his family, his father and his people, um, fight back against Machine Man and put an end to him once and for all? We'll find out in the next issue. I love this issue. Spectacular read this week. All right. Uh, we got two covers, which is the uh, same book. Uh, this is from Zen uh, Zenoscope, by the way. Of uh, I hope I'm saying it right. Mass. Masumi. Oh, Masumi, Blades of Sun, Issues 104. We have two covers right here. Both are really excellent covers. Who knows, we might get the same two artists all the way through to the end. Exactly. And I really found this to be an enjoyable read. Uh, it really talks about, um, you know, about her uh, story of how her family were, uh, like, you know, like all samurais and everything with the... Uh, well, not Samurai's, like, she had the sword that uh, speaks to her and everything. And, uh, she, like, just goes through, uh, all these, uh, demons and stuff. Like, the artwork's fantastically drawn. Like, absolutely to per per uh, perfection. And, uh, she fights off against the deadly sins, but the, uh, sin that has, uh, been with the blades from the start was, uh, despondency, which is loss of hope, is what they meant. And then she talks about how her family, how her father died because of, uh, losing hope, and, uh, how the mother died as well. So she uses the blade to, uh, you know, keep her going and, uh, everything else with that. There is also a scene where she's in an alleyway, and if you want to uh, see about that, definitely really read, nice artwork. Read the you book. show this two pages. Yeah, this one right here, it, it's just fantastic. I was blown away by this artwork. Really awesome and amazing. So when she goes back to her uh, cousin about the uh, box, she thinks that she betrayed the family, and there's like a whole big thing of. Uh, who uh, she's going to meet up with as another opponent right here. So, that's going to be something to look forward to. So, this one right here was uh, really uh, an excellent read from uh, Zenoscope, and I'm looking forward to reading more of that. Next, we have Goddess Inc. <clears throat> Issue number one of five, the next installment in the Godstorm line, even though it's called Goddess Inc. We have Venus, who is trying to put take all of Zeus's children, and she's leading. She has this plan to go up against Zeus again, and she goes after. Oh God, I forgot his name. Apollo, and she actually has um, a follower, and she says, "I need you to bring together the family." Um, basically, she's about to come into a lot of power, so she reaches out to Apollo who's also with Sage. Sage is, I forgot what goddess she is, but we'll see it again. Um, I think she represents the Virgin. There was a whole bunch of, the whole list of characters, but there's going to be the God of War here. I'm looking forward to this, this series. Uh, you have, uh, like I said, you got Venus trying to get Apollo to join her on her side. And then you have um, Zeus who finds out about it through his daughter Sage, and Sage warns uh, uh, Zeus that she has she has something up her, her sleeve. He reaches out to um, his other daughter, whom we've seen before, and um, basically they come together to find out what Venus is planning, and we find out that Venus um, has Apollo now, basically. And that's kind of where it's left off. So Venus has some type of a plan in mind where she's going to be come to come into a lot of power, and uh, she wants to basically take out Zeus, just like always. A uh, very interesting story. Again, it's uh, it's sad to see Patrick Chan leave the series, but it's good to see that Zeus and everybody else is still around. It's going to be really interesting to see how this story uh, moves forward. I really enjoyed this book. This is one of the first books I read. I believe I read it. First, and that's why it's the vague, the vaguest book in my memory from last week. 
Uh, next time I've got to remember to read it again last because this was really good though. I would definitely recommend it. Okay. And last physical book from Archie Comics, The Great Chaos Caper Part 4 4 of Sonic Universe, issue number 66. The variant cover of Sonic vs. Knuckles. And no, you don't see Sonic vs. Knuckles in the comic book, it's just the variant cover. So, just to make this short, it's basically Knuckles and Team Chaos trying to get the hooligans who have, uh, can't remember his name, that has the uh, Chaos uh, Emeralds, uh, Chip, who has the Chaos Emerald, and they catch up to them after a while with the demon that they're still fighting. And then meanwhile, back at Angel Island, Pika has a talk with Fixit about the uh, database of uh, Dr. Eggman, and by the way, here's some artwork. And there's Eclipse again, who wants to get revenge on Shadow, and that leads into another title, which I will show at the end. So as they're fighting against the hooligans, Espio does a uh, trick with their radar, with uh, the Chaos Emerald, thinking that it's uh, still out there somewhere, whereas uh, Vector had a uh, chip inside uh, his mouth with the Chaos Emerald. So that was a pretty wise uh, trick that they did, which led Knuckles bringing it back to Angel Island so he could have it secure. And with that, we have uh, a whole alien invasion that's happening, and Dr. Eggman, who has a very special way of getting the Chaos Emeralds all together. With an off-pound, that was funny. And here's the next is your Sonic Universe Vision number 67 of Total Eclipse Part 1 of 4. And am I getting this series? Absolutely. It has Knuckles and Shadow the Hedgehog on it. And with what I saw from Eclipse in this, yeah. Definitely going to get that. The whole series of uh, the great um, Chaos Caper gets a between a 4.5 to 5 out of 5 whole series. Really enjoyable. You want to talk about your guilty uh, pleasure? Yeah, this, this is a week? guilty pleasure. Uh, it was a lot of pages, and I uh, try again through most of it. Uh, this is the uh, Sonic Super Digest. Issue number eight. Issue number eight. It's basically a magazine that has tons of reprints of older Sonic right. comic books. And I really enjoyed uh, reading some of them, but like I said, it was uh, too many pages. But it is really interesting for those. It's once a month. Yeah, and it's once a month. For those of you out there who are Sonic fans, uh, such as me and my brother are, then you'll definitely be reading this magazine, and if not, then you won't. But up to you guys. And my guilty pleasure of the week goes to Garfield, issue number 28. Lisa Moore still doing all the coloring on it, and the artwork, as always, stays um, the same throughout the entire book, which I'm very happy that the artwork is finally the same. As always, like I said, guilty pleasure. If you love Garfield, you'll be reading this book. If you don't love Garfield, you won't. And now I'm going into Dark Horse for Angel and Faith, issue number 5, season 10. Uh, this issue focuses solely on Angel. There is no faith in this issue. So, somebody's getting uh, picked off. Well, there's, first of all, Angel has a nightmare about his past when he was an evil vampire. And then it jumps into the present. It turns out that there is a vampire that's attacking victims during the day. And he's done it more than once already. And it peaks... Oh, who brings it to him? Agent... Um, Brand. Or Brand. Oh. Yeah. He, Agent Brand's the one that brings the uh, cases to Angel's attention. It piques Angel's interest. Angel goes looking around trying to figure out how an, uh, a vampire is able to hunt during the day, how he's able to stay out during the day without being completely covered because Angel can't do it, and he's an old-school vampire. So he sets up this elaborate um, trick to um, trap this vampire and find out what's up. Um, he uses the ants, Giles' ants. Oh, okay. And he gets stuck in the tunnels underground because there's construction going on, and the ants have to fight off against um, the vampire until Angel finally shows up. But this vampire can turn into a bat, he can turn into mist. But anyway, by the time Angel does show up, he's able to take out the vampire. And that's really the end, but now... It leaves Angel questioning, um, 
things have changed. First we have zombie vampires, and now we have this. Um, he's like, things are, uh, vampires are different again. I guess that's just one more thing to keep me up at night, and that's it. Standalone story, really good. I left out a bunch of dialogue and a bunch of stuff. But I love this issue. I love the artwork in this book. And I, I definitely recommend Angel and Faith. I love the Angel and Faith series. Uh, let's see. What are we going to go into? Let's jump into Dynamite. Now, we have first Michael's book, which is yes. Big Trouble in Little China, issue number three. Yep. And in this comic book, uh, we saw in the last issue where uh, there were two people who are... Uh, like going on the adventure to save their friend and they meet up with the uh, the statue sisters and we get the people we met in the last issue who do a little bit of destruction on their trucks and well not really they actually were going to but they wait they said that they were gonna wait outside until they come out so while they go in uh, they see like lots of interesting uh, statues and stuff along with uh, some backstories about it and uh, you know, there was one part of the uh, book where, uh, as they were going on the adventure, the all works great, by the way, where he actually s finds out who the uh, sisters were. You know, what are you doing? No, I'm going up. Oh. And, um, you know, and he finds out that the sisters actually turned out to be the guys, actually which were uh, in the issue. But that's after they go through this whole uh, thing. If you want to know what they uh, he went through, you should definitely read the book. And that's the uh, sisters. I know, right? That's what I said when Yeesh. I saw them. And uh, they said that uh, we have a challenge for you to, uh, you know, if you could swipe these before. Because they say we see things uh, before you even do it. And he just swiped them one, two, three, and they didn't even see it coming. So, uh yeah, BS artists, I know. So, uh, they went out, because remember, they have to save uh, their friend in uh, out in a couple of hours before the guy kills him. With all that. And uh, it actually shows uh, the guy who I'm talking about, the Emperor. And uh, let's just say that um, it's going to be a lot sooner than they actually think. So... Whatever they're doing, uh, they better get back as soon as they can before their friend dies, or someone's friend dies. Well, what they're doing is killing him. Well, yeah, what they're doing is killing him. I don't want to say that, but... You know. But you should definitely read the book if you've been reading it uh, all along like I have. Now, what I didn't realize, um, which um, I I'm going to rectify right now, is I missed the Blood Queen... Issue number two. I don't know how it happened, but I missed it in the driver for last month. And this week, Blood Queen issue number three came out. Blood Queen issue number two, to give you guys a really quickie. Um, Elizabeth stayed behind to um, make sure that to stay court with the king and to make sure everything is, you know, stays okay because blood magic was used and blood magic is uh, forbidden. So she sticks around. There's actually a crop... Uh, there's, um, oh, what was it? I forgot. But her and, um, if I can get this to load, it goes so slow. Um, Sir Fernick actually share an intimate moment in this book, which was interesting because it was kind of teased in the first issue. Mm -hmm. So you can see her relationship with him kind of grow, at least in this issue, because in Whoa. issue three we don't get to see Fernick at all. Uh, and then she's given a task, um, to investigate a possible crop blight where crops are being um, poisoned and she uses blood magic to cure the crops and to fix everything um, and then she is confronted by um, oh geez I forgot her name but she showed up at the they mentioned it at the beginning of number three yeah, I'll show uh, number three if you're doing number three yeah okay so here's Blood Queen issue three cover. Winifred, which was the old woman that sent her to the king uh, in the first place. She shows up at the end of issue number two, uh, and it turns out that she's not really an old woman. Spoiler alert, that's just a magical ruse. 
that she's really a young woman. Why did she disguise herself? We find out in issue number three, which issue number three kind of sets up a lot of the past. It talks a lot about the past. Apparently, Winifred was one of the blood magic witches, and years back, um, the Council of Kings decided all witches and warlocks can stay, but any witch that practiced blood magic or any blood magic witch needed to be killed. And they sent this um, knight who was of royal blood out <clears throat> after all the blood magic witches. And he actually went up against Winifred, and both of them went down. He disappeared, and Winifred went into hiding because she was afraid, you know, he was going to come back for her. And she wanted to find him, you know, and find them. You know, she wanted to stay hidden. And that's what led into things going on now. Now, the king is setting up an arsenal. We don't know for what. We have Elizabeth, who is kind of eavesdropping in on the king, who is actually asked to a, um, what was it? A, um, there's a war that's going to go on, and they want to have a royal council. There's something going on with uh, Sir... I forgot his name already. Uh, John Hunter, whom he actually spies on the king as well to make sure everything is going according to... However, and how she's spying on the king, you got to read the book to find out. But it turns out that the, there really isn't a council, a royal council that's going to go on. It's something else. So hopefully Elizabeth will interfere uh, and be able to protect the king. And that's where it's to be continued. I really am enjoying Blood Queen. I was very upset I missed issue 2 and I'm really glad that I found it. And I'm able to do not only issue 2 but issue 3 right now. I highly recommend Blood Queen 100%. Now there's like yes. one dynamite book left and that is Flash Gordon issue number 3. How was yes. it Mike? Flash Gordon, I find this book to be very adventurous. Uh, you get, uh, Flash Gordon, who teamed up with, uh, the people who were fighting against, uh, I think his name is Emperor Ming, I'm not too sure. Along with his other friends, uh, who are with, uh, it is Ming. yeah, the other people, and you find out a little bit about, uh, Emperor Ming as well. So they're trying, uh, to, like, escape so that way they can, uh, not be uh, stuck with Emperor Ming. And then we get this interesting story about Emperor Ming, about why uh, he wants to take over, and it's a really interesting story. You should definitely read the book to find out more uh, information. And really, that's the long and short of it, really. Just uh, that, and uh, with amazing artwork, by the way. And it's just them just trying to get back to Earth because they're on a different planet, you know, and... Uh, it's a very adventurous book. That's why I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to ruin the adventures uh, for you guys. And uh, this next book from Dynamite. Yeah, I just realized that Shadow is, is yeah, part of Dynamite now. I the forgot. Shadow. So, the Shadow, Midnight in Moscow, issue number three. This is the final Dynamite book yeah, we have. This and week. Uh, in the last issue, we have uh, the Shadow te or uh, Lamont Cranston. Thank you, Lamont, telling Margot that he's going to retire being the Shadow. And uh, we all know what happens when they retire, right? But we'll get to that in the end. So um, when he's going through his retirement, he's just saying like how everything, he wants to just relax and let everything, you know, be calm. But knowing that when he's retired, something happens and that lets him investigate a little bit. Just as himself, not as a shadow. So, um... There's like lots of dialogue, I will admit that. The artwork is really uh, great. And it's just where he's just going around and asking questions uh, with Margo. And this is in uh, New York City, by the way. And he's still got great fighting skills, Amon. Like, he just takes out these people who are after him. And he wants to find out more about that. And in the end, guess what happens? He is going to become the shadow in the next issue. You retired for one issue. That is what I'm saying. They retire and come back. Either an issue or two later. So, I called it when uh, 
I said in my review in the last one. Now this book right here. Yeah, we have two image books. This yeah. is Imperial number one. Yeah, this one here, everyone, is my book of the week from uh, the digital comics. Because, really? Yeah, because we get this uh, person who dumps his father's ash, and there's this superhero named Imperial that comes and meets up with, oh, what's his name? I think Mark. Mark. And he tells him that he is the next Imperial to become just like him. And he's like saying, well, you're crazy, right? I mean, I dumped my father's ashes and you come out. Because he was a comic character from long ago. Mm -hmm. And we find out more about that when he uh, is with his uh, girlfriend about uh, Imperial. And to be honest, I don't know if it reminds you of him, but he kind of reminds me of Superman. A little bit. Just a little bit. Not like him, just a little bit. And he and uh, while he was going out with his girlfriend, he's trying to show him the ways of a uh, convention, I think he called it, where he wants to show him about being a superhero by flying and everything. And uh, he's, you know, this is all new to him, so you know it kind of gets him a little bit nervous. So he wants to save the convention discussion for another day. And, um, you know, his girlfriend is... Uh, you know, trying to find out, you know, all this and that, what's going on, but, uh, I'm telling you one thing, though, um, when the, um, asteroid hits, Imperio actually, and, uh, Mark got a little bit caught in it, and, and we all know that to be continued, you know, Mark's gonna be alive, and probably Imperio, he might die because he wants to give the powers, uh, to him, so, you know, but... I really found this book to be absolutely amazing. Book of the week, and I can't wait to read the next issue to see where it goes from there. Okay. Yeah, and the next one here is Tech Jacket, issue number two. I always hear good things about Tech Jacket. It is good. Like, it goes to his childhood where, um, you know, like, of his birthday party, and uh, in the future, he goes into uh, space to find out more stuff, and... There's a villain in the book who wants uh, his tech jacket uh, thing because it has the ultimate power to take over uh, the universe. I think uh, Mr. Crow actually talks about how he wants him to die along with his family so he could get the tech jacket. Right. So that's going to lead into more of the story. So we find out more of his adventures where his parents think, you know, he's off in space and let's hope that he comes back alive because... It's been months then. So he gets uh, to meet up with this uh, weird looking creature who uh, basically got the uh, best of him, sort of. Which goes back to his family where uh, they had a cake for him when he came back and apparently the father would eat it because it's kind of long overdue then. Right. And just to end this, uh, he meets up with a uh, new villain, Tech Jacket, and... It's going to be a huge, huge challenge that he's going to meet up against. And if you want to find out who it is, read the book. It's really amazing. With that, we're going to take a two-second change, and then we're going to conclude this week with the last three books from IDW. All right, and we're back, and let's go into some IDW. Let's start with this book, Angry Birds mm -hmm. Comic, issue number three. How was yes. it, Mike? I know you read, Angry you read Birds. this for fun. Yes, it has three books, uh, stories of... I was going to say what they were, but... Uh, static, cling, a little off the top, and what's the last one? Last one oh, in. last one in. So the first one talks about uh, the weather, where the pigs want to take over the birds, and they come up with this uh, weapon generator that produces thunder, and one of the birds uh, who does it, I can't remember the name because you're going too fast. Um, they don't have names. No, that bird has a name. Uh, Eugene, I think? Or Hector. Like, um, if I see the name. Basically, like, when they use uh, him to uh, inhale the weather, he gets all puffy, and he has this electrical uh, charge that connects the birds to him and all the other objects, which leads up to the pigs and the he basically throws water at them, and the pigs are now um, defeated. So I think it was that. A little off the top, it's just one of the pigs who have 
uh, who found uh, a uh, toupee when he fell into a laundromat that made him superior. And they all want to find what toupee would be better than his. And uh, that's really all the, the thing about that, just about the pigs, really. And they use uh, the bird's nest as a toupee, I which I thought that. was funny. And, and he's like saying, but she didn't get the eggs. Like, that was the mission. I thought that was funny. And last one, it was a two-second read where the bomb... He jumps in, and when he blows it up, the water uh, evaporates, <laughs> and yeah. So he was the last one in with all the water that just went out, and I thought that was really funny. Really great for the kids, or for those of you who have played Angry Birds, such as myself, and, um, you know, it's really amazing. Definitely check it out. Rogue Trooper Classic. Yeah, I want to before. Yeah, I'm I wanted to surprised you didn't issue. like this one. I didn't because a couple of pages, it's like they show the story, it was to be continued. And then they showed it again, and it was to be continued. It's like every to be continued should have been in one book. Mm. I don't get it. But anyway, long story short, it's Rogue Trooper who, uh, with uh, uh, Bag, I think his name is, they're on this mission and they're trying to... Uh, stop this uh, whole invasion of uh, what's going on. So uh, he uses all his weapon tech, uh, his guns, and his backpack that talked to him, which I still think is really cool, by the way. And there are these other uh, troops who want him killed because he is the last of their kind. The rogue trooper they want killed. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just getting so confused. It was like, to be continued, here's a new story. To be continued, story. It was kind of a back and forth thing, so... I'm, I'm giving you the long and short of it, but if it's going to do that in the next issue, I'm not going to come back for it because it wasn't necessary of to be continued new story to be continued new story where it should have all been one story like every Flowing comic freely. book. Right, like every comic book does. It gets a little bit confusing here and there, but I'm not really a fan of that this week. And finally this week, Star Mage issue number five. Yes. And this is where uh, Darren continues his adventures of, uh, well, he's, for, it starts off where he's using his powers, and the king's like saying, you know, focus your energy and use the power that you should be using to, you know, and, and it's also become Spectre. So after a while, they have this long conversation where uh, he shows him a vision of uh, his brother doing the exact same thing his father did with the whole you know, uh, joining the other side, I forgot what they were, but it was joining the other side and, you know, causing all destruction and everything, and Darren's saying to the king, oh, you're lying, this isn't true and everything, so, you know, you gotta be uh, kidding me. So when he was um, asleep, he saw a vision of uh, him with... Uh, the brother and the father showing all his destruction, he couldn't believe his eyes. So when he woke up, his friends were there, and uh, what he's saying is that he wants to go to uh, uh, something of the, the planet of fate, I think. Uh, it was a planet of something. Um, planet of. You keep going down. Like, they want to go to this uh, planet where uh, all this is um, being, uh, like, where all this activity was happening. Uh, it was planet of something. I, Whatever I it was. Remember. It was planet of something. You're going too fast. But anyway, this, um, the other guy uh, who was working with him, got a, uh, lost his scepter abilities because it was responsible for Darren, and he became of something else, which he does appear in the last issue. And, uh, let's just say that Darren, who meets with this new, uh, person, yeah, I don't think that, uh, Darren is going to, uh, find, uh, any way out of this. That is if he knows how to use his magic and everything. But I, I just It wish, ends strong. Yeah, I just wish I knew what that planet name was. It was Planet of Knock uh, Planet of Sorrows. Planet of Sorrows, thank you. Planet of Sorrows. 
that they went to. So, yeah. It was really amazing. I'm really enjoying the uh, story of Darren with uh, his abilities and stuff like that. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really, like, hard for him to accept of what his father and brother are doing. But, um... By far, it's just going by very smoothly. And with that thing I saw at the end with the biggest challenge, that's going to be a huge thing for him in the next issue. Mm -hmm. So let's see if he's going to put his power to the test in real life. And with that, that's it for this review, guys. Feel free to leave in the comments below your likes, dislikes, recommendations, questions, comments. Anything we talked about here, anything that you guys have read that you'd like us to read, let us know in your comments. will be heard this Friday on the weekly comic book call. Don't forget to check out Comic Related, Comic Frontline, and Zone4Podcast.com, your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Stick around, guys, because we still have the DC and Marvel uh, reviews coming up yep. right after this video. Got lots of cool stuff. Next, this is 249, but Marvel and DC both will be episode 250. Halfway point to 300. Mm -hmm. And until next time, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and we will see you guys in the next review. Later, everybody.